we are asked to find the exact value of trigonometric functions of some famous values. The first one is tangent of 30 degrees. So my recommendation is derive it on the spot if you need. For tangent 30, or anything of 30 degrees, I would start with a regular triangle with sides 2, 2, and 2, and then chop it in a half, thereby creating a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And because of the symmetries, we know that focusing on this half, we know that this side is 1. And so we have a right triangle whose two sides we know. We run the Pythagorean theorem and we find the missing side to be square root of 3. You have to be careful. What we're looking for is not the hypotenuse, right? 1 squared plus 8 squared is 4. And then when you solve for 8 squared, that's how you get 3. And now we're ready to read anything of 30. So 30 is here. Tangent means opposite over adjacent. That's 1 divided by square root of 3. And depending on what you're doing, you may or may not want to rationalize this. I'm perfectly fine with this. But if you want to rationalize it, we would multiply this thing by 1, where 1 is a fraction with the same thing upstairs and downstairs. And that same thing is carefully selected to make the denominator rational. In this case, square root of 3 will do the trick. OK. We can check with a calculator. This form, I just think of this number as the number that if I square, I get one third. Of course, you could enter tangent 30, you could enter this and compare the decimals, but where is the fun in that? So I'm just going to say tangent of 30. And then I'm going to square it and I'm hoping for one third. Uh, pretty much one third. Reciprocal of zero. So we probably get the answer right. The next question is cosecant 45. For anything of 45 degrees, I would go for the isosceles right triangle. We can think of that as half of a unit square chopped off by this diagonal. So if we select the shorter sides of this isosceles right triangle to be one unit long, then by the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to get square root of 2 for the hypotenuse. And then cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So also, it this is probably the only case where we should make sure which, which angle we focus on. So let's say we're going to fixate on this angle of 45. So for this angle, sine of 45, is well sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's one over square root of two. And we're gonna have to take the reciprocal of that for cosecant. Well, that's just square root of two. Let's check with the calculator. You can enter cos oh, I don't think you can enter cosecant uh, 45. I think you can only enter into this calculator sine and then take the reciprocal of that. We can do something very uh, explicit. We can say 1 divided by sine of 45. And then make sure we close as many parentheses as many we open right there. And if you don't recognize square root of 2 yet, well, square root of 2 is a number that if we square, we should get 2. So if I square this, there we go. Our answer is probably correct. Okay, what else do we have to find? We have to find cosine 60. See, the nice thing about the 30, 60, 90 triangle that it brings you all trigonometric function values of both 30 and 60. We don't have to draw a new triangle. We just need to look at the same triangle, but now we be focused on 60 degrees. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse to 60. The adjacent side is 1. The hypotenuse is 2. So cosine 60 is one half. So our answer is probably correct. Of course, there's another way to check sometimes, and that would be 
that would be to see if uh, my openness thinks if our answer is correct. One over square root of three, square root of two, one half. So we got all of these problems right. Thank you for watching.